good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and today I've got a watch that really made me think a lot about what goes on in the mind of a watch guy or gal to make us love a particular watch, and what finally goes on in our head to actually buy that particular watch. And I, cause I, because I feel that watch nerds out, out there, we all have that one watch that we love so much from afar, but no matter what happens, even if we have an actual opportunity to buy that watch, stars never quite align or it just keeps getting passed over and for me that watch was the Christopher Ward C60 Trident and finally finally I broke that pattern and I got one and I am so happy that I didn't break the pattern earlier because oh my god I mean because I got this one over here oh <laughs> good god <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just so good. I'm I'm so happy that I waited. Anyway, I kind of just like ruined that little part over there. Anyway, I am so happy that it's that it's amazing. But also at the same time, I'm surprised that no one else has reviewed this particular watch yet. And yeah, there are a lot of reviews of the first version, the Sapphire version. But I feel like it's a completely different beast. I actually uh, wanted to make this a shorter review just to see what, you know, try a different format. But I mean, when I was looking at it, I was just like, there's just no way that this is gonna be anything shorter than a in-depth review because there are so many little, little details in this watch that just make it incredible. So I want to make sure that everyone can just, just take in all the goodness in all the details of the watch before getting it because there are so many so many good details to take in. So uh, without further ado, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video. So for that same reason, I've got all the chapters at the bottom over here at the timeline and also all the timestamps in the description. If you wanna rewatch it, go back to see the dial, which is a big thing. So yeah, take, take advantage of that. Coming right now, we've got a lot of, you know, close-up shots and a lot of macro shots, which were so much fun to do because it was, ah, it was just macro heaven and also, we've got some outdoor wrist shots so you can actually see what it's like in real life. So yeah, I think uh, I think that covers everything. So let's just get into it right now. I am just so pumped to look at it a little bit closer again, even though it's been on my wrist for such a long time. Okay, so just a little context on Christopher Ward. They were started in June 2005, so they've been around for quite a while. Uh, for what's considered a micro brand, even though at this point they really aren't. But uh, it was uh, started by Mike France, Peter Ellis, and Chris Ward, and they wanted to start a new business venture together, and they all loved watches, so uh, out came uh, Christopher Ward. They actually chose the name because uh, Chris Ward had the most, uh, I guess, um, aesthetically appealing <laughs> um, name of all of them and the most British sounding of them. They decided to go straight to the customer. Their quality really shined through, because they're able to offer a lower price but offer higher quality because they're taking out all the extra expenditures that come by uh, having authorized dealers and all that good stuff over there. So uh, they went on to uh, you know great success. They released their C60 Trident, uh, which was their uh, dive watch, the first generation. It was pretty different from what it is right now. And now we're in the third generation. And now we have the Sapphire Editions because... Uh, last year, they released the blue dial version with the blue case back in. And this year, thank God, they released the sapphire black. And that's, uh, oh boy, let's just take a, yeah, that's never going to get old. Okay, so now let's get into the dimensions and the specs. So uh, the main spec over here is that it is 600 meters water resistant. Uh, stainless steel all the way through. The dial is made out of sapphire with a PVD coating. And same thing with the uh, case back. So let's get into the dimensions right now. Case diameter, that's showing here as pretty much 40 millimeters. Let's get the lug width, 19.9, 20 millimeters. That's wonderful. Lug the lug is 47.4. Brace it at the clasp, 18 millimeters. So it's a two millimeter taper only. Yeah, 40 millimeters perfectly is the bezel. And let's get the dial, 31 millimeters. And let's get into the case thickness which is uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a thick boy it wears like a two so yeah 13.5 that's uh that's no joke uh this is gonna be a rough amount just because it's kind of hard to get a, a good good glance at that but uh, it's about seven millimeters for the mid case which is a good mid case kind of have to eyeball this a little bit that doesn't look great 
as you can see over here, uh, the bezel pops out quite a bit uh, from the mid case. So that does take a lot of the visual uh, impact. And the crown diameter is seven millimeters, pretty much, 6.9. Okay, and next we are on to the movement. And uh, we're gonna take a, actually, actually this is quick release, so let me just get this out of the way. Well, would you look at that? Okay, so for the movement, we have a Salida SW200-1, can't complain about that, I, th I love a good workhorse, accurate to plus or minus 20 seconds, but honestly in uh, real life I have been getting much better than that, it's about um, minus 3 or 4 seconds, something like that. It is very, it's pretty nicely finished, it's a uh, utilitarian, it doesn't have any um, uh, brushing or per, uh, a prolage or anything of that on the actual movement and I'm happy with that because it would not have worked with this aesthetic but they did uh, put in a you know quite a little bit of effort for the custom rotor and it has Christopher Ward and it has their logo um, all over the uh, inside of that uh, uh, rotor so I absolutely love that it's a really cool detail as you can see it looks almost kind of titanium right now but it isn't this is just the 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 tinted sapphire crystal it looks uh, really good from uh, the dial as well as you can see yeah, I mean, if it was any sort of perlage, it would look pretty idiotic. So, all is well. Now, to the dial. And it is so awesome. I still remember the first time I saw it in front of me and not in the pictures. It just blew me away. Uh, it is a PVD-coated uh, sapphire crystal because a lot of people complained about the fact that the blue version is just a blue film on top of the sapphire crystal. The uh, the tinting is absolutely perfect because if it was any lighter it would have been pretty much just a clear uh, dial and that would have just made the dial look a little bit too busy. You would have seen a little bit too much but if they made it too dark then you wouldn't see enough of it but they just managed to get it right just to the point where at a glance you really can't see what's going on. You see that something's going on the dial but you really just see a gray dial maybe even black at some points but when you look at it i mean it's just you can see all the details inside of the watch it's just so amazing <laughs> i mean ah you can see a lot more happening in the dial it has the date going all the way through the top i mean it has a lot more going on well and also different color gray black gray so all that fills in that negative space and it's that's one big checkbox with this watch over here and also because it's black it's better than the blue and yeah and as you can see the date wheel is color match kind of uh, so it's black and now it really looks like a dial uh, element at this point it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a sector dial because of the way that it's black and uh, so well done on that and also a really cool detail that I noticed is when I first saw it, I was like, okay, cool, you know, that's a, you know, a gray chapter ring. But that's actually the uh, metal spacer that people usually uh, complain about. But yeah, I mean, in the end, it's just so cool to be able to see the dial workings and actually seeing the move, uh, the date change at 12 a.m. And it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what more can I say that the pictures and the videos don't show? Okay, and on to the hands and the indices. And for this third generation, they switched to a triangle hour hand, a baton minute hand, and just a standard uh, second hand with a loom, a circular loom pip uh, at, at the top over there. And uh, it's got a little red paint, which looks really great, uh, especially uh, with all the red accents that, they, that, that there are on the, uh, the dial with the uh, little... Uh, our markers, the poop, the, the poop, the pip over here, the 12, and uh, you know, the automatic, oh, sorry, not the automatic, the uh, the depth rating uh, showing as uh, red as well. So very cool. Love the handset. In more detail, the, uh, the um, hour hand and the minute hand, they have a brush surface along the tops of them and on either side of them, uh, it's polished. And those are three different facets. Catches the light very nicely. Uh, that's a, that's going to be a theme uh, going forward over here because they actually named the case the light catcher case. Onto the indices, it's uh, stick indices all the way through with a double stick marker for the 12 o'clock. And yeah, it's uh, brushed on the tops of uh, each of the uh, markers over here and the inside edge of all of them. It's kind of, it's an angled angled cut. And let me see if I can try to capture it over here. Oh, you can kind of see a glint. And that side is polished, so it plays with, once again, it plays with the light so nicely. So the indices are all very three-dimensional. They come off the dial, which is so nice. Okay, and on to the loom. And uh, I'll include shots of uh, the loom over here. And 
it's on all the uh, hands and indices as as one would expect. Additionally, it's at the 12 o'clock pip over here, the white triangle, and also the red triangle, and this, these black markers over here at the on the bezel that go from uh, 1 to 15, that's also loomed as well. And uh, that being said, the red and the black, they're pretty much, I mean, they're barely there. Uh, when you charge, even when you charge it up, so you know it looks cool, I guess, but you know not very, uh, nothing to write home about. But the loom on the indices and on the hands is Super Luminova XLG, no, X1G. Oh my goodness me, okay, X1GLC1 <laughs> Super Luminova. So that's supposed to be incredible. And uh, you know they made a huge deal out, you know, deal about it uh, on their uh, website. It says you know they upped the loom, they made even more of it. So when I actually did charge it up and I went to a dark room, I was pretty underwhelmed. I mean, it's not bad, I guess, but it is nowhere as bright as a Seiko Luma Bright uh, uh, loom. Uh, once again, that is really on a different level, but I still would have expected some sort of uh, performance out of this, just because I've seen, um, you know, uh, Oris's, even the Laurier, they have, you know, the BGW, uh, BGW9 uh, Blue Loom, granted, but those shine a lot brighter and a lot uh, more effectively. Our hand, uh, the, the middle section of it uh, isn't perfectly... Um, uh, applied either it's a bit splotchy uh, and you can kind of see the slight splotchiness uh, with the other indices uh, over here so overall was not expecting that at all it was a pretty it was a pretty big downer I wish this had a really great great loom don't expect a light show that's all I'm saying okay and now on to the bezel and the bezel is insanely good and uh, apparently they they benchmarked a lot of the best divers out there, including Submariner, which to this day is 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 the single best bezel I've ever felt in my entire life. So they got pretty close to that. And uh, let me just, uh, there it is. Actually, let me just bring it a little bit closer to the mic. Yeah, so as you can see, it is very, 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 very nicely done. First of all, it doesn't have necessarily that sort of clicky feel as a, and springy feel as a, a, the Seikos do. And at the same time, it's not way too uh, stiff and uh, and blocky like the Zeloses can be. The, the resistance is very nice, so you don't have to push it really that hard or it's not too soft at the same time and the clicks themselves have a nice sound to them it doesn't it just doesn't it just hits the spot so nicely i would say honestly uh, other than the submariner and the tudor bezels this is the best bezel uh, that i've felt and that includes my seamaster there's a very slight um let's try to get it focused over here. yeah so there's a, a polished uh, band on the top and the actual uh you know the coin coin edge uh uh, bezel isn't sharp it isn't soft but it still has very good grip as you can see uh, even with gloves on uh, we're gonna get into the case but uh, this does have a flat sapphire crystal on the top over here which is perfect for this kind of watch just because you can see the dial uh, really uh, really really quite well okay so in on words to the case and man those polished edges look and polished surfaces look so incredible because it is actually very 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 well done the level of execution is incredible and as you can see there are oh god there it is in focus uh, there are polished chamfers that go along the tops of the lugs that's obviously a detail that i love a really cool detail let's try to see it over here is that you can actually see actually it might be a little bit more on the other side you can actually see the under okay there it is you can see the underside of the bezel at on the reflection of the polished surface so that's how well and smoothly that polished uh, surface is done and okay so the underside of the well the mid the, the bottom of the mid case over here is polished and uh, I love you know good alternating surfaces but it can sometimes look a little bit busy just because the case back has a lot of steps to it so this adds just another step so that actually adds to the visual weight of the case back if anything but it does wear uh, a little bit high off the wrist and the 
the design of the case bag does not really help uh, with that but um not not really a problem it wears ex extremely well on the wrist but yeah i mean uh the lugs are relatively simple uh once again very nicely done and they work well uh with the bracelet and they just uh continue the lines of the case and uh yeah so uh, no complaints over there uh, onwards to the crown it is uh, really nicely done uh it's uh, it's it's polished top with the uh, debossed, embossed, in relief <laughs> logo with a sandblasted background. So that's a really cool look and uh, very nicely executed. And there's really good grip uh, with the crown uh, as you pull it out. And it's uh, the threading is incredible. Very, very smooth. It's only maybe uh, short of a uh, Rolex for that matter and uh, maybe Tudor. So when it pops out, it pops out very confidently. And also on top of that, uh, when it is in the, uh, you know, when it is fully extended, there is absolutely no play in the stem. Absolutely rock solid. And that's something that uh, uh, is uh, maybe, you know, not the most important thing, but it's uh, definitely something that's uh, nice to see on a watch at this price point. Okay, and on to the bracelet over here. And it is, uh, as we said, uh, 20, 20 millimeter uh, lugs, and that tapers down to 18 millimeters. Uh, here at the class. Yeah, I mean, it's a great, very, 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 very well-built bracelet. It feels great. The finishing is great. Uh, but honestly, you know, it's a it's a bit boring. I mean, it's an, it's an oyster. It's a three-link bracelet with, you know, very classic-looking finishing. And, uh, and, you know, I'm not really that enthused by it. And, I mean, over the past, you know, few months, I've been wearing the Laurier Hydra Series 2 with a an amazing bracelet and then the Zelos uh, Swordfish 40 with an even better <laughs> looking bracelet and then also the Tissot PRX with that and all those play with the light so amazingly so uh, switching over to this it, it was a bit of a uh, downgrade in terms of overall looks also on top of that uh, the uh, one one thing that kind of bothers me is that the uh, the mid link is really really very very wide so it does uh, you know make the, uh, the entire bracelet wear uh, very thick and then also uh, sometimes you'll be able to see that some the uh, taper is pretty much non-existent not only because it's just a two millimeter taper which isn't very much but also because the uh, mid links don't change so as you have it on your wrist it pretty much gives you the effect that it's not tapering as you can kind of see over here just look at that it's a uh, deployant uh, clasp over here it says Christopher Ward here at the uh, at the clasp uh, Mills clasp the actual clasp itself is very nicely done too very uh, uh, well uh, finished and the uh, the buttons are feel really good uh, there's no uh, uh, micro adjustment showing up from the outside which is pretty sweet and that is because it ratchets uh, in and out so uh, that's pretty cool you can extend it uh, as much as you need to or uh, uh, you know as the day goes on maybe you're outside in the sun your wrist expands just pop it out a little bit and then uh, put it back in uh, after that's done let me let me just get the click uh, on the mic real quick yeah that's a very 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 nice feeling click and also the sound is really nice it just oozes quality one thing that's a little bit irritating is that uh it doesn't have any half links so yeah you have the uh, the ratchets uh in the class but that's not really there to uh really make up for you know lost uh, uh micro adjust positions or half links uh, that's really there uh for a purpose you know i now the way that i have it is uh, it's uh, it fits perfectly, but it's uh, with the ratchets all the way out, so I can't extend it out. You know, come the summertime, so it kind of defeats the purpose on that end. And these are pretty uh, big links, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to find a, a good fit with uh, while still using the ratchets over there. I just wanted to go over the negatives of this watch because this is an incredible watch uh, overall, and uh, these negatives are easy to deal with, but they are there are no watches perfect. And uh, first and for, for, foremost is the loom is extremely disappointing on this watch. It's good, but that's not what I expect from Christopher Ward. Also, on top of that, uh, it would have been nice if they made it 12 millimeters instead of 13.5 because it does wear a little bit thick. I would have taken a uh, 300 millimeter <laughs> uh, water resistance uh, for that. Also, I wish that this had a 4 millimeter taper. I think that that's the perfect. Uh, uh, taper for bracelets and especially when there's mid, mid links that uh, are so thick 
on this and uh, stylistically maybe I would have liked the uh, indices to be a bit bigger. Okay so now that we've seen everything so why did I get it in the end and the reason was because originally it was kind of filling in uh, a spot that my Omega Seamaster left because I sold that a little while ago. I really started missing that because that is an incredible watch. So I love that watch and I wanted to get it back but I didn't really want to rebuy it at that point so I saw this Christopher Ward, I saw the quality, you know, just in pictures and reviews, and I just loved it, and I loved the GMT of it, and it just checked a lot of the boxes that I was missing from the, in my collection, and also from the Seamaster for that matter. So it was 40 millimeters, which is perfect, 20 millimeter lug width, which is awesome, quick release bracelet, even better, GMT, oh my god, loon bezel, oh my god, good Seamaster vibes, high quality, good bracelet, everything is amazing. It literally checked every single box. But that got pushed aside because uh, I really wanted to get the month of Sky Quest, and I don't know when I'm gonna get it at some point, but I want to get it, so that got pushed aside, and then the I went to the C60 Trident, the normal diver version, and that got pushed aside too because eventually I decided that I wanted to rebuy the Seamaster at some point. Don't know when, but I will, so I didn't want another redundant watch, so that got pushed aside, and then I thought the, the, the last generation, the Sapphire version, would be the one, but it was a little bit too blue for me, a little bit too bold for me. I knew I wasn't gonna wear that much. So that got pushed aside. So that's why when this watch came out, the Sapphire Black, it just set everything straight just because it had a very chill dial, but still something super interesting. It had all those perfect, you know, uh, specs with an amazing unique dial. So at that point I was like, that's the one to get. Okay, and finally, can I recommend uh, this watch? And absolutely. If you didn't already get it, I love this watch. I love it. So if you were in the same position as me, you know, just kind of half-half, you know, kind of admiring it from afar, don't know whether or not to take it, you know, is Christopher Ward really worth the hype? Is this watch really worth the hype? I can tell you that it is worth the hype plus a thousand on that, okay? So it's just, oh God, it's going to my eye. So yeah, I mean, pretty much any watch from the C60 range will be perfect for you, but on top of that, this particular watch is even better. So yeah, just go ahead and just get it. Because with that, you're getting just the sheer amount of quality that you're getting for the price. I mean, for under a thousand, for, you know, this was, you know, for under, well under a thousand actually, for some of the watches, it's just incredible to see the level of finishing at that price. And it happens a lot that, you know, watches at this price point, they feel and look like quality, you know, for that kind of price you should be getting really good stuff but every but you know there might be a certain detail in that watch that you're like mm, okay maybe that's maybe where they cut a little bit of corner or oh maybe that's where they uh, got some cost savings in there so with this watch i genuinely can't see a single corner cut for the price at all the fact that this is under a grand and it's just a gift to anyone who wants to get this watch. You look through all this and there's a lot of great footage over here and I had so much fun doing it, but nothing can really prepare you for the watch in person and in your hand. So even if you watch this a billion times, this video, and I hope you guys do because that will help a lot, but no matter what, nothing will compare to actually having it in your in your hand. I mean, I still remember the first time I saw it, I was just speechless and I just started cracking up like a madman. So yes, I want everyone to feel that experience. So yes, if I haven't made myself clear, I'm kind of rambling on right now, but yes, just go get it. Just please go get it. It's amazing. There are a bunch of coupon codes out there, 10% off, 100% 100 off, that was amazing. 15% uh, off, all that stuff. So just look it up and yeah, just take advantage of that because this is just, on another level. So yeah, there you have it. And if you like this video and enjoyed it and just <laughs> and are overwhelmed by how amazing this watch is, give it a thumbs up and subscribe because there's gonna be a lot more content like this coming up. And yeah, put everything in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think the blue version of the Sapphire is better? Do you like the other C60s more? Do you think that Christopher War is overrated? Whatever it may be, just put it down in the comments. I love replying to the comments just because it pretty much feels like I'm just talking to the watch fan out there. So that's what I like doing anyway. So doing it through over here is just another way to do it. So yeah, put everything in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, until the next video, uh, good day.